Hi, I'm Hassan, the lecturer here at the Institute of Medical Education, and today we're going to take a look at solutions to Section 3 of ACES GAMSAT Pink Booklet, Practice Test 3, specifically Unit 15, Questions 43 and 46. And in this unit, we've been told that when mammals and birds inhale, the inhaled hair rapidly equilibrates to body temperature and becomes saturated as water vapor is added by evaporation from the surfaces of the respiratory tract. So when we read this stimulus, it's, there's two key points we need to take note of. So the first is inhaled air, it equilibrates to body temperature, which is 37 degrees, heat is added, and it becomes saturated. So that means water is going to be added, so 100% humidity. Whereas exhaled air is cooled, so heat is lost, and water is, I mean, I say lost through condensation, but what happens is, as we see in the, um, the text, it says that uh, cooling causes water vapor to condense from the air onto the surfaces of the nasal passages, and this can be collected um, upon inhalation. So those are two things to note. And you can think of it this way. If you're going to put air into a cold system, the water vapor is going to condense, and it's going to condense onto that surface. So you can think about it that way. And I guess the questions in this stimulus, um, they require you to understand uh, or to manipulate the net changes in water addition and loss. And uh, I guess the change is in 100% humidity plus or minus 20% humidity. What it just means is, let's just look at the graph that's presented in the figure, uh, uh, in the stimulus, and it shows us we have two lines, a dark black line that represents 100% humidity and a dashed line that represents 25% humidity over an x-axis, which is air temperature, and y-axis, which is water in the air. Now, think about this um, uh, before we answer the questions. So if we take a look at question 43, it says, consider a human with a body temperature of 37 degrees, inhaling air of 25 degrees with 25% relative humidity. Now remember, if they're gonna inhale air of 25%, 25, uh, 25 degrees of 25% relative humidity, that is going to equilibrate to body temperature, so that means it's gonna be 100% saturation. So the humidity is going to be 100%. So it tells us that in, um, uh, in the first line, actually where it's got the asterisk, so when the uh, uh, inhaled air rapidly equilibrates to body temperature and becomes saturated, that is, it equates to relative humidity of 100%. So the question's asking, which of the following is closest to the mass of water added to each liter of air as it becomes saturated and equilibrates the body temperature? So let's just start off first. So if we're going to be inhaling air at 25 degrees, so 25 degrees, oops, 25 degrees at so 25%, if we take a look at the graph, so draw the line, it's going to be, so it's the dashed line. The dashed line for 25%, um, so the dashed line for 25 degrees is going to be about, let's say, 5. So we can say it's going to be, so the initial, so inhalation, um, uh, let's take a look. So it's going to be 5 milligrams per litre. So the... Um, so the final is going to be 37 degrees. Sorry, the reason why I'm thinking is because I just want to make sure I read that question properly. So it's 37 degrees um, for 100% humidity. Just double checking. And if we trace the dark line on the graph so 100 so for 37 degrees we go up to 100 so we go up to water is going to be about 45 so yep if we trace it's going to be 45 milligrams per liter that means if it asks which of the following is the closest to the mass of water added to each liter so if we started off with five and we ended up with 45 that means we've added 40. So the answer for 43, therefore, has to be C. So now if we take a look at question 44, screen, it states, which of the following statements is correct? Now we've got A, B, C, D. I think it's easy to know just by looking at A and B. It says, as the temperature of ambient air increases, its humidity has less effect or it says that its humidity is going to have less effect on the amount of water that's added or lost. Now, the reason why A and B are incorrect, 
have a look at the figure provided in the stimulus. You can see that clearly humidity has an effect on water. So whether you're going to have water in the air, whether it's going to be lost or whether it's going to be added. So the humidity has a massive effect because you can see how it jumps from, if we've got relative humidity of 25% to 100%, the water in the air is significantly greater, obviously with a humidity of 100%, and that's going to affect, so it's going to have a great effect on the amount of water that's lost or in, um, added in exhaled and inhaled air because that's going to obviously affect the amount of water that's lost or gained through condensation and nasal passages. So if we can't cool the air, we're not going to collect water. So um, that's if the humidity is low or high. So humidity does have an effect here. So that's why A and B are going to be incorrect. C, so C and D is about less cooling or more cooling of the air passages um, is going to result in more water being recovered. Remember what we said at the beginning, kind of think of it as, um, let's say you put a whole body of air into a very cold climate. What's going to happen to the water vapors? They're going to condense. So that means you're going to collect more of the water. So when it says more cooling of air passing through the nasal passages during exhalation results in more water being recovered, that's true. Because if you're going to cool down the hot air, you're going to collect the water vapor, not if you're going to um, warm it up. So C says less cooling, which means warming it up. Warming it up means you're not going to collect any water in your air. If anything, it's just going to be released. So that's why the answer for 44 has to be D. So I think you just kind of think of it as putting a body of air into a system. And if you cool it down, obviously you're going to um, collect the water vapor or you're going to collect um, the water. So that's why 44 is D. Now, if we take a look at 45, so 45 is kind of similar to 43 in that it's asking us, so kangaroo, so let's just say 30 degrees, um, 25%. So it's a kangaroo rat um, inhaling, so inhale, let's say exhale. Sorry, I can't write. There we go. Um, exhale, uh, saturated air of 27, so 27 degrees, saturated. So you just got to go back to our graph now. Um, it says, which of the following is closest to the net loss of water from the kangaroo rat for every lease of air exhaled? So if we go to our graph now, let's go to our 25%, the dashed line. So let's hit 30 degrees. It's going to be about, let's say, 8 eight milligrams per liter. So let's look at our 100% um, humidity. So the, when we exhale, so 27 degrees. So if we look at 27 degrees air temperature on the x-axis, we go up, it's going to be about 28. So we'd say about 28 milligrams. So, But the question here is asking, which of the flow, following is closest to the net loss of water from the kangaroo rat for every liter of exhaled air. So for every liter of exhaled air, the net loss is going to be 28 minus 8, which equals 20 milligram per liter. So the answer, therefore, or sorry, so it says per liter, so for every liter. So yep, so it's going to be 20 milligrams. So the answer is going to be for 45A. So now if you look at question uh, 46, it asks, so clear screen. So 46, you, you really don't even need to read the passage to, uh, to answer this question. So 46 is saying, which of the following would not improve heat exchange in the nasal passages? Now remember, what does improve heat exchange? So what do animals have that improve heat exchange? Remember surface area? So surface area is a big one. So um, counter current blood flow. So we're told in the stimulus actually that counter current blood flow is important um, for, uh, for this phenomenon. So obviously that's going to be correct, which means we can't be D. Um, uh, highly folded surfaces, surface area is going to be increased. So that would improve heat exchange. So look, it's going to be between A and B. Short nasal passages or narrow nasal passages. Now let's think about it logically here. So remember what we said surface area. So if the surface area was high, that means we're going to have higher or improved heat exchange. So for A, it says short nasal passages. Short nasal passages have a very low surface area. If we have a long nasal passage, 
the heat is going to be exchanged much better. I think think of it as like a long sauna or something or just a long bathroom or something. The heat exchange is going to be better if you have more of a distance to exchange the heat. So that's why A is going to be the correct answer because um, it would not improve heat exchange. A long nasal passage would. But if you take a look at B, it says narrow nasal passages. And that makes sense. If you're closer to the system, you can exchange the heat easier. So let's say, for example, you're, you're standing under aircon. Or, I mean, heat, in this instance, you can say one of those um, heaters you can buy or something that you can um, uh, stand next to a heat source. So the heat is going to be exchanged because you're closer to it. So obviously, na narrow nasal passages would improve heat exchange, which is why B is going to be incorrect. So with this um, unit, uh, I think this, this would be a difficult unit to, to understand because there is a bunch of text you have to read and then look at the graph and understand what the graph is telling us. But um, once, once you get the, uh, once you uh, comprehend that we've got inhalation and then we're going to equilibrate to our um, body temperature, which is going to be 100% humidity. So the air is going to be the 25%. Um, or the outside. So once you understand that and working through the um, uh, the net changes, you should be fine. However, if you're still having difficulty understanding this unit, you can post your queries in the comment section below or you can contact us directly. We'd love to help. Thanks for your time. Bye now.